Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. Uh, we've got another scrap out video now and it's another um, is it worth it type video and I'll be doing quite a lot of these and I know that they've been done quite a lot on YouTube but um, I have my own spin on it and we'll give you a few options so you can decide yourself whether it's worth scrapping. These are all old fluoro tube assemblies, um, some quite vintage ones, that's a very early style that one. Um, and there's just some single ones, there's a selection of shorter ones, uh, no globes in them, no, or tubes, which is good um, because I'd have to take them to the transfer station. But what I'm going to do with this lot is give you a few options and let you decide if you think it's worthwhile scrapping them. So first of all, if you were to take them to the scrapyard just as they are, they would go as uh, shred, dirty pressing steel basically. Um, they've got contaminations in there, bits of plastic, wiring, uh, these transformer looking things are known as ballasts and they've got copper wire in them. But if you took the whole lot as it is to the scrapyard, you'd get at the moment around about 10 cents a kilo. So we'll weigh them up and see what value they are just like that. And the last group of little short ones weighs out at six and a half kilos. We've just added that to the list to give us a total of 82 0.5 kilos at 10 cents a kilo we're working on is eight dollars and 25 cents so there you go that's what it's worth if you take the whole lot in to the scrapyard just as is so now we'll pull some apart i don't need to film this they're pretty easy to pull apart anyone that can hold a screwdriver um, shouldn't have too much trouble so we'll pull them apart and we'll make groups of respective piles that we can weigh up and see how much we can value add and I'll keep a rough track on time to see how long it takes to do these. I've just finished all the little short ones so that's all clean steel there's no plastic or anything else other than just painted steel there's the ballasts that I've got out of them so far and quite a bit of wire it's good uh, good clean wire and I'm getting a bucket full of the brackets and the starter holders and the tube holders so by scrapping you will generate some waste whereas beforehand it would have all gone to the recyclers but we'll deal with that um, in the next option perhaps at this stage that's just been discarded uh, I've spent about 10 minutes doing those little ones and I thought I probably should show you exactly what I am doing just quickly for those that haven't done much scrapping before and the covers pretty well lift straight off and there's no contamination on the covers so that's going straight down to that pile. So in here we have the tube holders, which it's just a matter of getting a screwdriver and pushing the little plastic clip down. And they just push in. And then I'm clipping the wires off that. The ballast usually just has a nut or a screw one end, and it usually just slips under a bit of a tab the other, so they're pretty quick to get out. And most of the weight is in those. Then there's the um, starter holder, which I'm just clipping the wires off. So you can see it doesn't take very long at all. This one's got two ballasts because it was a double fluoro. And this one, I noticed, has got a little terminal. Uh, most of them, because I've just been clipping the wires straight off the, um, the fittings, I don't have to worry about terminals. So I'm just chopping them straight off like that. But to get a good price for a wire, we have to make sure that there's no terminals or plugs on them. So I'll cut that one off as well. So that's all I'm doing, and it's not taken very long at all per uh, per unit. And we'll keep continuing now and see how long it takes to get the rest of them finished. Then we can weigh up all the individual bits. I've now completed the task of pulling them all apart. Uh, and we've ended up with a reasonable amount of uh, wire. We've got a whole tub full of the ballast, which is quite heavy. We've got a large pile of all the pressing steel. And that's all clean there's no contaminants we have a tub full of just bits and pieces there was brackets that held some of the wiring there's lots of nuts and bolts and screws and things and we have a bucket down here full of all the fittings that held the tubes some of them had uh, large capacitors in them which are aluminium cased so i've just thrown all that in the bucket so this is this is the next option if you like of how far to scrap it out 
So we'll weigh out these components and we'll work out if it's worth going to this stage and I've spent about an hour and a quarter doing it. Now I did take longer, you could certainly do it quicker, um, but I take a bit longer because I do actually unscrew everything. You could certainly build a lot of things out with a hammer much quicker. You do tend to make a bit more of a mess. And a few that I did build out because they were rusty and the screws wouldn't undo. And you can see here, rather than trying to undo it and take a lot of time, I just hit it with a hammer. So you could certainly do it quicker than I've done it. But, um, you know, this will give us a good guide. So an hour and 15 minutes to get to this stage. Let's weigh it up and see what value we've got now. Let's see if we've improved on our $8.25. So there's our nice pile of clean shred or pressing steel, no contaminants, and with a clean sample, most scrapyards will pay better. In fact, they usually get about double. So here's our weights. They ended up at 48 kilos. And I recently Melbourne prices were paying about 20 cents a kilo. So for good clean steel, you can certainly get better price, usually about double. It depends on your quantities and everything else. Now, uh, that will equal $4.88, $9.60. So we've improved on our $8.25, not by a great deal. And we did spend an hour and 15 minutes. However, we've still got all the good stuff. So let's weigh that up. And I'll get a new sheet and we'll give our options so that you can really get your head around what's the best thing to do when you get fluoro light assemblies. Let's list our options. I always like to do this because then everyone can keep things in perspective. First thing I will suggest with any item to be scrapped out, can you actually sell it? Does it have a use still before you actually do scrap it out? Uh, some cases uh, things can be fixed easily. Uh, but in this case, the fluoro lights are very old style ones. They're extremely dirty and they're old technology now anyway. Uh, sometimes good clean fluoro lights can be sold or at least given away to be used. These ones, definitely not. So we'll move on from that. As we've said, dirty shred steel, 825. Now a more detailed scrap out. Clean steel, we've just got a price of 960. Let's look at the next thing on the list, which was the ballasts. So I'm weighing up the ballast next, and these are heavy little bloaters. We've got 10 kilos just in that small pile. So I'll have to do this in a few stages to get you a total. So that stack weighed out at 28 kilo all, all up. I had to do three lots on the scales. So 28 kilo. Now ballasts uh, contain copper wire. And they used to go, and I think they still go to the scrapyards as the same as electric motors or transformers so we had 28 at around 50 cents a kilo it does vary a lot on where you are and what the price of copper is at the time but that equates to 14 dollars so that's boosted our bottom line quite a bit let's weigh up the insulated wire i've teared the scales off for the plastic tub so now that that weight is the weight of the copper wire and it's pretty well spot on two kilos so let's add that to the list. Uh, two kilos at uh, around about $2 a kilo. It does depend enormously on the price of copper. It's certainly been up higher than that, and it's certainly been lower. But a lot, I'm working in round figures here, really, so that you can judge um, you know, the different stages of scrapping, and you will have to factor in prices in your own area, and depending on when you watch this video, it might be five years down the track, and it might be better or worse, who knows? $2 a kilo for $2, uh, 2 kilos is $4. Okay, that's probably the best value stuff. Now we just have, well, it certainly is the best value stuff. We just have a tub of bits and pieces. You could probably tip this in with your dirty pressing steel. And at a pinch, you could possibly get away with tipping this in your dirty pressing steel. Um, there's, there's brass and things in that, these brackets. And we will address that in the next option. But this option is just a basic scrap out and if you do sell dirty steel um, they will accept a fair bit of rubbish in it so we'll weigh all this up just purely as dirty pressing steel at 10 cents a kilo to get a final figure and then we'll move on to a third option with a little bit more scrapping and sorting to see if we can get a bit of extra value out of it all i've allowed a little bit for the bucket um, and the little plastic tray so 
we'll call that three kilos so we have dirty steel uh, three kilos at 10 cents gives us 30 cents so the tally for this stage of scrapping gives us 90 wait 17 and one's 27 dollars 90. so we've certainly increased from our 825 but we really only made a whisker under 20 dollars for an hour and a quarter now as i said you could certainly do that quicker and the reason i took a little bit longer i'll show you in the next stage so one could surmise that it's worth scrapping to that next level let's say you can knock it over in an hour which shouldn't be a problem if you're just using a hammer so you know close to twenty dollars an hour that's okay most scrappers would accept that sort of return of about twenty dollars an hour um, most people who scrap enjoy it so it's uh, not like it's considered hard yakka that you don't want to do uh, so let's look a little bit further at if we can eke any further value out of it firstly the copper wire now everyone knows that copper is a good metal good value metal and if you can get it pure it will pay pretty well in fact you know, good clean copper is paying six to seven dollars a kilo now there is good clean copper inside these wires however the time involved to get it out really is not it's not economical um, if anyone's really keen to do it by all means but we're looking at economics here and we're looking at value for your time and yes there's the enjoyment factor but anyone that's stripped a whole tub full of wire that really doesn't add up to a lot a lot of weight will soon recognize that it's actually not that fun so we had two kilos of wire here at best we're going to get a kilo of copper um, it does depend on how thick the insulation is and there's some that might pull out okay but a lot of it just isn't worth the effort it would take you at least an hour to go through that tub probably quite a lot longer for the sake of you know one kilo getting about six dollars and then you've got a lot of rubbish to get rid of so not worth it i'm not going to do a, a test to show you there's plenty of videos on youtube about stripping wire I should also mention that we were getting uh, $2 a kilo for two kilos. We were getting $4 for the wire as it is, unstripped. So to slave away for a good amount of time uh, to get $6 plus a pile of PVC insulation means we're only actually making about $2. So definitely off the table in my view. Now we'll look at what's next. These ballasts also contain copper wire. They're like a transformer and you can break them open to find your copper wire. Uh, similar to the wire, there's a lot of work involved in getting the pure copper out or the clean copper. And I need to mention that in these older ballasts, they actually use compounds in there that are, actually, that are proven to be carcinogenic. Um, there's quite a few YouTube videos warning people of not breaking these open because of the compounds uh, I forget what they're called at the moment but ultimately it doesn't matter because um, you shouldn't do it on the more uh, more modern ballasts uh, they don't use those nasty comp uh, compounds anymore but you would need to be familiar with which ones do and which ones don't this one doesn't refer to any compound inside uh, but it really doesn't matter in my view you're getting pretty good weight out of these and at 50 cents a kilo yeah that's um adding up to pretty easy money very quickly and you're not slaving away for hours just to try and make an extra couple of dollars and of course then you're going to have more rubbish to get rid of and the cases that have to go into dirty pressing steel so that's off the uh, off the list as well in my view don't waste your time on those so what's left to get a little bit of extra value well these two lots I'll, um, I'll sort them out and we'll have a bit of a chat about what we have left here rather than just throwing them all in our dirty shred steel for a, a meager 10 cents a kilo let's see if we can get a bit of extra value out of this lot so I've sorted the contents of the first little tub 
and what we've got here is just some clean steel uh, the hardware I've just sorted via a magnet into uh, normal screws, nuts, bolts, etc. And some brass ones. And certainly you need to use a magnet because some of these look brass, but they're actually just plated. Uh, we also got a few um, connecting blocks and terminals. And we've got a small assortment of just brass bits and pieces. Now with the bucket, I'll go through and I'll scrap, micro scrap these. Uh, because they do have brass plates in them and there's a little bit more hardware so we'll go through and pull those apart and I'll keep track of my time and then we'll have a look at the end and see if it was worthwhile okay I spent an hour this morning scrapping these things out um, I didn't get through all of them um, but an hour was long enough we've got um, a bit of an assortment here I did decide that these little things that held the um, fluoro starters weren't worth scrapping because um, they're 90% plastic. There's just a couple of little copper steel bits and that. they'd be um, brass, but there's virtually no weight in those. So I didn't worry about any of those. And the actual starters themselves, there's no scrap in them other than the, um, the two contacts, which are brass, but they're minutely small. So um, I didn't worry about scrapping any of those either. So these are the things that I broke up, leaving them out with a screwdriver and they have quite large brass connectors they also have little copper um, sort of spring copper connectors for the wire and quite a bit of hardware so it took me an hour to generate that much stuff and we didn't get quite through the whole lot so I'll weigh that up and just see how much value we have got and then we'll uh, get back to our notepad and summarize what's the best options so what's the final wash up on this thing? Well, the brass was the bulk of the better value scrap we got from micro scrapping. We didn't even quite get a quarter of a kilo. Uh, let's assume that brass play it pays $4 a kilo. Uh, I think it's a little bit more than that at the moment. But there you go, that's only a dollar. So we'll add that to the list here. Brass, $1. Uh, the copper I didn't even weigh, it would hardly even register, matter of a few cents. Cup with all the ends of the wires, no real value there. A little bit more clean steel, but that's only a matter of a couple of cents again. And I did save some hardware because I have an avenue of selling it. Um, a jar full of nuts and bolts and washers and things I would get $5 for, so maybe there's a dollar there. Maybe not quite. Uh, I also separate the brass hardware. And I would get ten dollars for a jar full of that, but let's just say a dollar extra value for the hardware, which I appreciate most of you wouldn't get. So hardware, excuse my scrappy writing this morning, one dollar. So for an extra hour's work, all we've added is two dollars. Um, the capacitors would probably best just to go into dirty shred, which we weighed them up earlier. They're certainly not worth pulling apart for the aluminium. And plus, in these older ones, we don't know what compounds they used inside. So we've got to keep safety in mind. Uh, you could maybe sell them as dirty aluminium, but really there's so little weight in that. It's barely worth it. So to summarise, micro scrapping as normal is really just a waste of time. Economically speaking, if you want to sit down and do a bit while you're watching telly, that's fine. Perhaps you can watch my YouTube videos and do some micro scrapping, but it's much the same as stripping, stripping out um, small gauge copper wire or trying to pull apart small transformers. It really isn't economical. So value for scrappers on this deal, certainly it's worth scrapping out to this extent. We've got a reasonably good return on our hourly rate there, uh, and I did generate a little bit of hardware as well. Uh, it took me an hour and 15 if you remember, but you could certainly do it in well less than an hour if you're not worried about saving anything. So you're going to get a good return from scrapping those fluoro assemblies doing that. Much better than just sending them all off as dirty shred steel. So my advice to scrappers is to take this option. Don't worry about micro scrapping. It's just, it's just a lot of extra work for very little return. So there you go. Hope you got something out of this video. Um, I think in conclusion it's worth picking up fluoro assemblies if you see them because 
you know, especially if you're doing a bit of scrap steel, because the uh, you know, it does add up to a fair bit of weight, all the um, the shells of the fluoros, and they do stack quite neatly, so there's no issues there. And you get really good weight for um, a small amount of size in the ballasts. So they're your two best value, plus of course your tub of uh, insulated copper wire, but um, it's not really heavy gauge enough to worry about stripping it. So thanks for watching, give us some feedback if you like. Um, I'd always appreciate some comments and look out for my next video.